as per division efficiency stories that are um, underneath my struggle to stop that. Can you say them a little bit louder? I'm feeling a lot of shame and I'm scared right now. Um, so the, what I want to work on is looking at my deficiency stories under my struggle to stop looking at porn. Okay. Do you know what those are? I can help you with that, but I wonder if you already have a sample. I did the one that I mentioned earlier. And not enough is coming up. Can you look at the porn images in your mind, in your awareness now, just the kinds of images that you're attracted to? You don't have to share them, just see them. See if you can boomerang that back. Like, is there anything there? Like these, the fact that I like these images, what does that mean about me? Um, I'm getting there's the stories about there's something wrong with me. Something wrong with me. Let's start there. Are you okay to start now? You need to, we can just calm down and rest for a moment if you need to. If you need to, does it feel too activated already? I'm fine with that. Um, breathe a little bit first, maybe. Following the breath. Now let the images go away and just stay with the breath. Would it be okay if we process some of the shame first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's also confusion, like, because I've had more time in my life actually not watching porn than I have with looking at porn, like zero to 12, no porn, then 12 through 24, porn, then 24 through 36, no porn, and then porn came back three years ago, so I was, I've had two sets of 12-year periods without it. Yeah. I'm confused why it's... The twelve-year period, where without it, were you choosing to be abstinent, or was it just naturally just didn't have any interest? Um, part of the twelve year, but not all of it. So, forgetting about the timeline for a moment, okay. when you go back to porn, do you feel the compulsion around it, though? Regardless of what's happened, have you been feeling a compulsion around it? Like I have to. I did a little bit last night, but I just chose to chant, sing, and watch some basketball. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just relax after a long day of inner trigger trauma work. Mm -hmm. Let's start here, if you don't mind. Is what were the words that you were saying about feeling ashamed to talk about it here? In your own words, what was that? Was that the words? Well, I just feel ashamed because I. I'm aware that I'm aware that porn is not healthy for the brain relationships in society. I'm aware that it cultivates like culture of human sex trafficking and degradation, objectification, and violence towards women. And I've been in I've been in the divine mother worship path for 14 years, and I'm just so sad that this is the struggle. Yeah. Because I really want to be so like impeccable in my integrity of the respect for the divine feminine and the divine mother. And I'm struggling really hard because I'm like, I don't want patriarchy and I don't want matriarchy for some reason. I'm just yeah. struggling right now. Can you for now just come down into the body and move the feet? Just kind of taking attention from the mind for a second. And letting that be there because it's like something needs to be felt. Just stay with it. <laughs> Just 
So yeah, good. So like for a moment, don't go to your mind to justify or explain anything. Just let the feeling be. Just a lot of fear. So with regard to the fear, here's, here's an inquiry for you. I'm not afraid of anything around this to see what comes up. I'm not afraid of this of anything. What is the fear? <clears throat> well, I got shamed at emergency medical technician school for not like treating a gunshot wound properly. And I was suspended from school for telling the police they were all the same equal soul. And then I got afraid of taking my final national exams. And that's when I slipped and looked at porn for the first time in 12 years ago. 12 years, and that happened three years ago. So there's still, I like, I still feel like, I still feel afraid of the police. Like, Can you stay with just those words? Hear them or see them, I'm afraid of the police. Just rest with them. There's a lot of energy there. But the, those words are bringing up the energy. So I'm asking you just to stay with them. Let the energy come up. So I'm not afraid of the police. Comes up. I don't know. I'm afraid to tell any story right now. I want to keep it laser sharp because that's the request been from at least three people to me in this room. <laughs> well, but it's okay to tell us the, the, the main core thoughts of it. So, well, I have fear because I remember in preschool being three years old and a motorcycle police officer coming to our school and pointing a radar gun at us while we were playing in the schoolyard and I thought he was going to shoot us. Mm. So there's that memory. You see that? Looking at it. What does that mean about you? What are the words that go with the meaning about you in that memory? What would that child have said? What thought? I'm confused and scared. So there you go. Be confused and scared for a moment. But you can see the thought or hear it. I'm confused and scared. Just be that for a moment from awareness without trying to fix it or change it or move away or turn away. Let it be as it is. See if you can stay with it until it just kind of falls away and then see what happens after that. The, the thought, I'm confused and scared. This more thing in the um, calm and centered. Calm and centered. Centered. See that there. Let that be there. Do you have any energy with it? You feel that? A little more quiet in my belly. So then just let that thought be as it is. You mentioned um, working as a paramedic, and this happened, the gunshot one thing. EMT. EMT. You see that memory of whatever happened there? 
It was a role play actually. Where it was in school. It was a role play at school. Okay. So you've got the memory of that though. That day and whatever. What does that mean about you? That memory. I didn't receive any positive feedback from the whole class. So right. it's kind of humiliating. Humiliating. Can you feel it? The feeling that you had that day? Or is it just a thought? Well, I, I felt pretty scared and nervous and confused. It's like just treating a gunshot wound is out of my normal experience. And I was told it was on the side of a busy highway, so I raised my voice to the teacher of the class saying, please call in for backup help. I need extra help. And then the police officer said, you shouldn't have raised your voice to the teacher. Right. Okay, so all that's going on around you, the class criticizing you, the officer. So the feeling is of humiliation, like the feeling. But what did it mean about you, like who you were, like more like a value judgment about who I am as this child or this person. I'm a bad person. There you go. Does that feel, you feel that? I'm a bad person. There, now that's a, that's a file that was pretty unconscious. Stay with it. There's a feeling with it. Let the thought be there with the feeling. Just for a moment, be a bad person. But you see, you're aware that that's different. I'm just thinking about it. So, it was also compounded with my meditation master asking me to move out of the temple because they wanted me to do a bunch of changes to the temple and they wanted me to move out. And so I was doubly a bad person because I was being asked to leave. Right, so there's another memory that sees the mirror back. And then I also got suspended from school for telling a police officer we're all the same equal soul. That was my first time ever getting kicked out of school. So all those mean you're bad. Yeah, so I had like triple whammy thinking I'm a bad person. So if all those mean that, can then can you come to that? Just the, the, again, staying with it, I'm a bad person. We now know the memories are there to prove that. So we're done with the memories. Now just be with the words. See if you can just stay with it this time, welcoming it. And see what it's like to see it fall away. You're not pushing it away. Just what is that like to see that fall away? <clears throat> like a reversing career? No, actually just witnessing. Like you're witnessing this words in a bad person and you just stay with it. Does it. So if you stay with it, see if it stays around forever. Where does it go? Like you're just curious, just looking at it. And that's all you're doing is looking at it. Yeah, it's not really going away. So must be something you really believed or like a core thing. So what do you get out of believing that you're a bad person? Just kind of ask it, like, what am I get out of believing that I'm a bad person? We'll see what comes up. And if nothing comes up, that's fine. I don't know what to say. I'm trying not to go into too much story. That's fine. Do you hear any utilities though? Like anything that sounds like, oh, this is what I get out of it. 
Uh, what I heard was strength. Do you yeah. know how I get strength? So by being a bad person, you'll get strength. Mm -hmm. Can you just let that be seen now? Because I don't know, have you ever seen that before directly? Don't answer that. I'm just pointing to the fact of seeing it. Just let it be there. Being curious as to what happens with it. I get kind of stuck on some images. Images. So the images pulled your attention to them mm -hmm. and away from the words. Mm -hmm. So what do the images mean about you? What do they mean? Yeah, the images are coming up for some, for some reason. Like say, you want me to say what the images are or what they mean? You can say what they are, but I think for this week, it's more like what um, they mean about you. Oh, I was, I, for some reason, I was having the image of Tupac coming up, the rapper, mm -hmm. and one of my good friends that I grew up with playing soccer, who was also in, in gangs. Um, and I don't know, I guess I just see both of them as not being afraid of, like, standing up to the authorities and telling them their truth. So that kind of strength they kind of have the bad boy image a little bit so it comes back to bad boy can you see how your consciousness is trying to prove that that's who you are so that, it's like giving you all this evidence of it but mm -hmm. what, what's not happening yet is can you stay with the thought of the bad person I mean I know you did that but it was stuck so I'm going to help you with it this time because all this seems to prove it can you come back to either I'm a bad person or I get strength by being a bad person. And then I'm going to help you kind of move through it. You know? Tell me when you can see it. Okay. You're in the second one. Okay. Remember tracing from yesterday? I can, I can explain it again. Yeah, I need another explanation. So what you're going to do is trace the space around the words, like you're oh, ordering right, okay. the words. I remember. And do that several times in both directions. Yeah, and then just stand back and what happens? I feel happier. Yeah, open your eyes for a second. Like without those words there, you see how there's awareness here without that story on the back for a moment? Mm -hmm. And you're happier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to Dave Corey. Okay. You close your eyes and you bring up those memories that we we're talking about that. Prove you're a bad person, see those again, some of them. Let's do a reverse. I'm a good person. What comes up? I'm not the person. You're not the person. I just, I just wanna go right there. Spiritually bypass yeah. being a good person. Well, at least you can laugh about it. <laughs> but if you trust your body, because the body remembers so I'm a good person. Does the body agree with that? I'm a good person. I remember changing the briefs of over 500 elders, taking care of them. So your mind finds evidence of being good. Is that what you see? Yeah. Remembering all the inmates I've worked with in seven prisons and jails on non communication and meditation training. Okay. <clears throat> what else? Been able to serve some positive things. So you're a good person. I've been able to volunteer at 11 homeless shelters. Proud of that. So you're a good person? I would reframe it into NBC, which is I like being a person who serves needs. Okay. <clears throat> so when you look at, when you do the inquiry on the bad person, there's nothing in there that objects to that. Body, mind, anything. I'm a good person. Well, 
I recently got arrested for nonviolent civil disobedience, was put in jail, and I have to go to court on the 29th. So there's a little bit of I'm a bad person. Okay, that comes because in, of the yeah. punitive justice system energy. I got you. So that comes back as you see the memory of the justice system. So it's really showing you again that you're a bad person, I guess. So can you come back to the words? There they are again. But just go ahead and trace them again, trace them in both directions. what happens i just feel so much grief about all the people of color that get put in jails and prisons in this country yeah. i might get into it Just looking at the room. So, is it okay to move forward? That energy kind of, yeah. If you look back at the porn images, do they reflect back that you're a bad person in any way? You watch that. Does that mean that or something else? I don't think I should be watching it. Because? I don't think it's the healthiest, most efficient use of my time. I don't think it's, I think I could be more selfless to people that are suffering in worse, worse conditions than I am. Um, and I think if I was doing more spiritual practices, mantras, meditation, mm -hmm self-inquiry, KI, I'd be a more present, solid, stable force of nature for serving Mother Earth and people. I don't think anybody has a disagreement with that. That feels good, but that hasn't happened yet. So what's happening is a compulsion for these images. So you're not to that place yet. So who is watching that more? Is that was that mirror black about who you are, that you're not to this place yet? You're talking about, you're watching. I'm kind of getting stuck because I'm feeling scared and uncomfortable. Okay. Um, Can you say more about that? What, what's making you afraid? Well, I'm just aware of being in a room full of many people, many of whom I don't know. Yeah. They may see me around the community and I'm just feeling scared about being vulnerable and open about one of my struggles. <laughs> Do you feel like you could open your eyes and look at them, or is it too much? <laughs> Do they mirror anything back about who you are? You've given, you've given them all this information, and now they know. I see some smiles. I see some people in pain and scared. Still closer to you. Huh? They still closer to you. What's that? They just feel closer to you. Kind of side. Thank you. But so the ones that are scared or in pain, do they mirror anything back about you, who you are? I feel scared and in pain right now. Okay. Can you just be with that? But remember how we talked about the labels, scared and in pain, to see that also. Let that be there too. Yeah, I notice when I feel scared and pain, like there's some sort of need to defend myself because I have to prove somehow what kind of male I am in this society. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm allowed to be scared and pain as a male. I agree with that. So see it. I'm not allowed. I mean, there's a feeling with that. 
to, to your elbow. You allow both to just be there without squirming away from that thought and that feeling. Okay, you're doing great, by the way. Yeah. I want to go with something here. Imagine these people go out into the town and they tell people. And so now a lot of people know the things that, that's not going to happen, <laughs> but go with it for a second. So everyone knows. What is that mirror back about who you are if everyone knows? I'm not that worried. Like watching some of your videos, I've decided to make YouTube videos, blogs, and Facebook posts about my struggle with this issue mm -hmm. as a way to like out my ego in public and also just like bring awareness to this as a struggle that other people might also want to be working to be free from. Okay, that's fair enough. <clears throat> then you're gonna do that. Can you go back to the porn images there? You see those images that you're normally somewhat drawn to. Go with this inquiry. There's nothing wrong with watching porn. As a reverse inquiry, there's nothing wrong. <clears throat> What comes up? Yeah, I mean, I can see how it meets needs. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're finding the positive affirmation of it, which is fine. I want you to go under it. Okay. Like, is it really, is there nothing wrong with watching porn? Is that true? Forget trying to make it right. Like, what do you feel in your body? There's nothing wrong with watching porn. How does that feel? My stomach feels overfull from overeating. Okay. Taking some medication last spring that made me gain weight. Um, I have curiosity about if my KI in inquiries would be more efficient if I got like a colostomy, or not, not a colostomy, but a colonic. It took a purgative with them because I feel like I've got stuck emotional energy in my digestion track. So you feel something down there in the stomach. You're saying it might be food or medication, but can you just feel into it for a moment as best as you can and just rest with it and stay there, just letting that be as it is for now without trying to think about what's happening down there, like just quiet, feeling into it. Like before you call a stomach ache a stomach ache, you just feel it to that. And now look back at the porn and answer from the stomach. There's nothing wrong with that watching porn. What does the stomach have to say? If it could speak right here. There's nothing wrong with that. Just kind of have like a weird paradox of like emptiness in my stomach and fullness <coughs> um, and a little bit of like waking nervous anxiety. Can you imagine telling everybody that you know all about your porn that you talked about that? Can you imagine just doing that right now? Does anything stop you from doing that? Is there anything that says no to that? Well, I have told some people and some people don't talk to me anymore, so. Right, what does that mean about you? You told them. I'm too open, I have bad boundaries. Too honest. Can you just be with those? Dirty. Yeah. Can you witness them? I have bad boundaries, see that? Let that be. And then the next one. Take your time with each one though. Just let them all be as they are.
Here's another question. What might you lose if you no longer believed you were a bad person? If you could, if you go through life and you couldn't have that belief anymore, is there anything that you would lose out of that? Something important. Well, I have a weird, twisted, distorted thought that if I take the blame in a conflict and there's peace because I get blamed and punished for being the bad person, and by being a martyr, I'm also a hero. Okay. Can you see those words? By being a martyr, I'm also a hero. Just looking at them from awareness. Letting those be there. Yeah, it's a really strange pair of words. Yeah, see, see if you can try not to understand it, but just seeing it so that you can feel it as it's there. Yeah, there's something you said earlier yesterday about being a peacemaker that I can relate to. So I don't need to make peace with people. I don't need to make peace with people. Really ask that earnestly. Try not to go, oh yeah, I don't need to. Like find in your body where you have been living off this idea. I don't need to make peace with you. Is that true? No, I constantly feel like I'm trying too hard to make peace with people. I get the opposite. Yeah. So be with what is. I try hard to make peace with people. But now for the first time, maybe you're not trying to do anything with that. Just be with it. I don't know if it's for the first time, but there it is. Yeah, it just goes back to that I'm not good enough. And there that is. Deficiency story. Yeah. Let that be. Without trying to explain that you're good or bad, just be with that. Is that a sticky one? No, I feel like I'm more in a vibrant river of life. Just not being in, like you said, not trying to explain being good or bad, just being present. Yeah. So within that river of light, I hate to bring the porn back in, we're going to for a second. Do you feel any compulsion towards those images right now? Is there anything in your body, say, after this retreat or sometime, you're going to need to go back? It's okay. You don't have to say that spiritually right answer here. Just be the honest answer. Do you feel that pull towards that? Well, I've looked for married couple porn, and there's part of me that wishes I was in a marriage. That I'm heartbroken out of all the hundreds of people I've asked in the last five, six years. No one's been a match. And, you know, there's part of me that just doesn't want to be in a marriage and wants to be single. So. Kind of seems like I don't know if this modality works on conflict, inner conflict resolution. I have other tools to work on that. So look at those people that you've proposed to, or that you've been interested in, all the ones that said no. Can you see them? What does that mean about who you are? Focusing on your identity here, like so they did all that, and what does that mean about? 
I'm not good enough. I'm not successful enough. I'm not spiritually advanced enough. Can you see each one of those just like you did? Just let them all be seen. Allow each one from awareness. Can you ask that again? Yeah, you said a few things. It came up like these women who said no, that made you think you're not good enough, a few other things. So I'm asking you just to see them now, to witness them instead of thinking them. Bring them up and just let them be. Well, just to clarify, it wasn't just women who said no, it was me who also said no. But, right. But that meant that you're not good enough. That's the thing I'm asking you to witness. Okay. I'm not good enough. Not spiritually evolved, just being with each one of those. Letting each one fall away on its own, if that's what happens. Like two, three, four away. What's the one that's sticky? I'm not successful enough. Tracy. Since we're still on that subject. Can we see the porn images again? Because what brought that up was I said, do you feel the compulsion towards that? Like then you brought up these women. Do you feel the pull towards the images in the body? Or the mind? A little bit in my stomach. Not too much. Well, I kind of feel it in my left hemisphere of my brain mm -hmm. a little bit. Can you bring attention to those sensations? Just rest with them. Let them be. What's the first thing that comes up when I ask, what do these sensations mean? Or what does the stomach sensation mean about me? What's the first thing that comes up? Discomfort. It's a label, just put that, let's see that. Discomfort, let that be. See if there's anything that follows it. Yeah, I got I got a little story that follows it. What is it? Uh, discomfort's not welcome in America. I have to be comfortable. Just see that for now. I have to be comfortable. Let that be. So what happens, are you still watching that? I don't want to shortcut that. Just kind of let me know what happens with that, actually. Um, I th my throat's itching and I'm remembering my mom washing my mouth out with soap. Uh, what does that memory mean about you? Feel that throat sensation, there's the memory. I have a foul mouth. Can you see that, that program? I have a foul mouth. Just let it be.
And just let me know what happens, Mickey. I'm scared about taking up time in this room and I want to take care of the group yeah. because I feel pressure based on, you know, being more pressure to take care of the group with my mom putting bars of soap in my mouth. You see that? I feel pressure to take care of the group. Just let that be without fixing anything about it. I just feel really uncomfortable. Is it the stomach? I'm itching all around my chin and my neck. Mm. Feel into it. So that it be felt correctly. Give the sensation a voice. Let it speak. What would it say? Mommy, why'd you hurt me? There you go. See that. Mommy, why'd you hurt me? Stay with that one. Feel that discomfort still. Yeah, I'm having other images coming up. Yeah, what is it? Uh, just remembering my parents removing my clothes and just feeding me bare bottom, very angrily, just slapping, slapping the shit out of my ass. And then, what does that mean about you? I'm nothing. There you go. Let that be. Without fixing that, just let it be as it is. Those words, whatever feeling is there. Not trying to be something, just be with that. Just welcome that. Let that be. Feel into that. Do nothing with it. Just feeling it is enough. Yeah, I'm just feeling really honored by the group helping me heal right now. Mm -hmm. We'll round it up in just a little bit, but I'm going to take you back to the porn images because you've released a little bit of energy there. We've done some looking just to see. But to be honest, though, do you feel the pull towards the images? Like, what does your body want? Does it want those images? I don't feel as much of the pull in my stomach and my left hemisphere of my brain. I was feeling this kind of burning sensation. That's not really there either. I'm just kind of feeling hopeful. So body's not, you're not feeling that towards the images as much. Check in and see. I feel a little more nausea towards the images. Just let that be, because that'll probably just be temporary. Just gonna let nausea be itself here. And then breathing, start breathing again. Come down and watch the breath permeate through the stomach and soothe the nausea. Let your mind quiet a bit. Is the nausea fading away or is it hanging around? 
I just feel scared. I'll go back to it like every 30 to 100 days, like my pattern has been for, like it's a periodic problem for the last three years. What's that? Every 30 to 100 days. What's that mean about you that every 30 to 100 days you keep going back to it? What's that mean about you? <clears throat> that I'm not like doing enough yoga practices to channel my energy. I'm not doing enough energy. I'm not doing enough physical energy. Like I'm not doing financially successful enough to attract potential life like um, I'm not doing enough yeah yeah so there's your there's the program I'm not doing enough feel that I'm not meditating enough <laughs> right I'm chanting enough mantras or if I am doing it it's like bringing up too much shit and I'm not able to face it but can you see that the core thing with all of that is I'm not doing enough of this of that of that yeah can you just be with that feeling that thought i'm not doing enough but without doing anything with it just letting it be there letting it be true i'm not doing enough but you're aware of it So I don't have to do anything more. Just go with that. I don't have to do anything more. What comes up? Well, before that, I was planning like what to do after I'm done with the session. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how am I going to feel if the group sees me? But then after, and then I was like, well, how's the group doing? How are they doing on time? Are people here at choice? Um, and then I noticed I was like, not really taking care of myself. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I, I know I need to use the bathroom at the end of this. Um, and then what came up for me was like, scared that I was having kind of a narcissistic thought that, um, like if I go away and just like go into solitude and like do a self-care, you know, big retreat for myself that like somehow like the group will still need me. This group will still need me. I'm like metaphorically saying the group, like mm -hmm. groups that I'm a part of. So I have to do more to get what? To do something else. Uh, the group's approval. So there you go. See that I need, I need their approval. Yeah, and I, I get confused between the part of me that's like approval and the part of me that's like, no, like that's the indigenous meme. Like that's how the group survives. It's like working together, pitching in, you know, you leave the group. How are they going to be if you leave the group? So there's part of me that's like, okay, yeah, uh, people talk about approval seeking and everything, but then there's this other part of me that's like, yeah, but this is sort of like a little bit more of indigenous meme tribal care. It's sort of convoluted, really. As the notion that you need people's approval causing suffering. Oh, yeah. That might be a reason to look at it. Because you don't know, you might still be able to be a part of a group without that thought. So you're, maybe your consciousness says, I have to have this thought. That sounds like happy liberation. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like liberation. <laughs> so I don't need their approval. Reverse inquiry. What comes up? Yeah, but what people think of think matters. Like when Eileen gave me feedback yesterday at the end of the day, like her feedback mattered not necessarily that I need to prove, but like I can think about other members of my spiritual meditation community. It's like, you know, their feedback matters. I want them to be happy. 
So I, I don't know, it's like such a paradoxical fine line between seeking approval, but I also feel like looking like a white male, even though I have Asian and Middle Eastern European roots, um, I still, it's still part, like I still need to invite feedback as a male in order to balance the score of the planet. So you can have feedback. I don't need their approval. What is it? You can have feedback. I don't need their you approval. You get to have their feedback. Here's the inquiry. I don't need their approval. Feel into that and see what comes up. Do you need their approval? I was, I was getting more of a no, that's true. I, I'm okay. I think that's a good enough place just to stop it since we're here yeah. in the retreat. But feels good. Yeah, you did a good job of just witnessing staying in the process. Thank sure. you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. It was a good job. Thank you, everyone, for helping me. Does anybody want to give him feedback? I got to use the bathroom. Okay, you go do that. <laughs> do you guys want to go with just a quick bathroom break? Does anybody else need to go? Let's do that three to five minutes. <laughs>